Love is so great. So why does it have to go so wrong? No good. <laughs> Hold on. Awe becomes simple fear all too easy, and when it does, what does it leave but hatred? No good? No. Nope. Nothing. <sighs> if there's one thing this world needs more of, it's thoughtful nobles. The left hand jeered. We're doing Vampire Hunter D! And the problem with that movie is it doesn't have a butt-fucking tagline, so I am reading quotes off of Goodreads from Hideyuki Kikuchi, who is the author of the Vampire Hunter D book series. Now, did uh, Bloodlust have a tagline at all, or were we just looking on the original? I was just looking on the original. I'm happy to look at the other one. I'm always a little wary of putting words like bloodlust in my Google search, because <laughs> I don't want my ads to come up where it's like, shitting blood fetish porn. You're like, oh no. Co-mingling body fluid. That can be a thing. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I am absolutely positive that there's somebody who gives themselves an enema with red dye and corn oh, syrup. No puts themselves in stirrups and then goes fecal <laughs> Japan on their ass. Also known as Tub Girl. Do you know that? Nope. Don't even... Nope. Do you know don't that even say, no, shush, Oh, it's great. Shush, so nope, this, nope, is, this nope. circulated <laughs> around my middle school Come where on. there's a girl who's in a bathtub and she's got her legs up at her head and she's shooting a geyser of what is either Sunny D or Tang out of her <laughs> asshole onto her own pixelated face. Interesting. It seems fake. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's probably not fake, but it seems very fake. You're literally just rationalizing, you're like, this can't be real, this can't be real. You pretty much. Oh, man. It's, like it's right me. here. Here's the tagline. Yeah, you want to do it? You try it. Nobody else has done a tagline on the show with me. When the sun sets, the hunt begins. See, I like that. You don't like my little line about awe and fear? Mm. And what leaves <laughs> behind? Whatever. Fuck you guys. It's okay. I'm going to do this show alone with three microphones <laughs> now. <laughs> So yeah, we're doing Vampire Hunter D and Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Uh, came out in 1985 and 2000, respectively. Here's the fun thing. I know fuck all about anime, anything so, since I was 14 and up. I don't think I've watched really anything but Akira. Am me. I pronouncing it right? Akira? Akira. Yeah, Akira. 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 Sure, whatever. Whatever. The point being, I'm very ill-equipped. These are my two... This is my Sherpa guide, and this is oh. my mystic voodoo husky man who is going to explain to me what the fuck is going on with these movies and uh, these were recommended by you, our listeners who we listen to so if you have recommendations you can always hit us up at slasherspod on Instagram on Twitter, slasherspod at gmail dot com, not dot net not dot org, I will not be fucked with and then there's also Facebook which is a burgeoning little mecca of fun and yeah, fantabulousness absolutely. Yeah, everybody needs to check out the Facebook. Jake and I have been uh, chat as well. We've all been plugging away at our little Facebook group. So, how many people have messaged you at like three in the morning? Oh, uh, I turn I, I turn all that shit off. Uh, well, that's the thing. I don't catch it at the time, but I get it in the morning, and then yeah, I'm like, this person probably sat staring at their phone for the last six hours, masturbating at my profile picture. Wait, <laughs> what? It's, it's weird. I <laughs> I actually uh, use Facebook Messenger. Um, or over text message with Michelle, and it just seems like it's a lot easier. So I switch over to my private account, and then I'll go to work, yada yada. And then after work, I'll switch over, and I'll have like 85 messages. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. You are so much more popular than I yeah, am. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's all good, man. Good for you. I mean, you're the belle of the ball. <laughs> Half of them are just like, hi, please click this link for something or another. And I'm like, no, I'm good. Not today, Russia. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of statistics for this week, it's going to be hell to try and do anything. Because we're talking about two animated features, both of which had an incredibly narrow theatrical release of any kind. We're talking about more like private screenings and stuff like that. You know those Fathom events with like, hey, check out Princess Monopoke. Yes. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, no idea what the budgets are, no idea what the gross is. Opening weekend for the original was twelve twenty one eighty five in Japan, or three twenty six ninety three in the U.S. And when it came to two thousand, they were both released April twenty first two thousand and one. Uh, what were you doing, Chad? You were born in nineteen eighty five. Yes. 
Were you born by December 21st, 1985? Yes. And what is your birthday? January 1984. Shit, you're old. I'm going to put that on my calendar. Chad is old. Remember to get him depends for his birthday. <laughs> can use those now. <laughs> so I'm looking at the movies in 1985. So somebody fill the air. Come on. The uh, One of the trivia things that I think I read was that Bloodlust was actually released in the U.S. before Japan. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Take that, Japan. <laughs> I feel like we still need to be nice to them. We really fucked them over. Like, yeesh. Yeah. I think the only trivia little bit tidbit that I had was uh, something that Jake picked up on also. Uh, Nobly, right? Whereas uh, they named him after uh, Chris Shirley. Yep. From uh, OG Dracula. Exactly. Yes. Okay, so here's, this is why I didn't find any of the dates that came out with the first one. It was 12 21 85, but it's viewed as like a direct to video release. Oh, thanks, Brian, for reminding me to do the thing I've <laughs> criticized both of you motherfuckers for doing. We're trying to stay close to the microphone so that Jake doesn't have to spend four hours editing a single episode of the podcast. We get good Patreon money, but not that good of Patreon money. Anyway, so it was right between two other release dates December 20th and December 25th. Enemy Mine. Do you remember that fucking movie? No. Yes. Chad, you're old enough, right? Yep. That's the Randy Quaid one with the fucking alien who has to, like, who, who the guy who has to have the alien's baby and all that shit. What yep. the fuck? Well, he, like, raises it. It's weird. It's not good. It is oh, not. The way you said that the guy is having the alien baby and, like, the guy got impregnated and is having <laughs> an alien baby. Holy shit, the week before was Brazil, the color purple, and out of Africa. Oh, wow, that's an intense week. Ooh. Yeah, so anyway, uh, in terms of competition, uh, I'm not worried about it, but it also didn't have a theatrical release, so I don't know why I gave you the competition. <laughs> I'm just an <laughs> asshole. So now I'm looking at the 2000s. Oh, so the runtime's pretty sweet. The runtime? Oh yeah, it's super, so 80 minutes for the first one, which was a dream. Yep. And then 101 minutes for the second one. I again did the thing where I watched on a higher speed to make up for my note taking and the first one flew by like it was a super delight what did you guys think about it it's funny that you did that because there are several scenes that carry on too long um yeah and I, it's like it's, it's like a directing or editing issue uh like even the very beginning opening clips there's a girl walking through the grass well yeah, yeah and there's she's, just tons she's, of steps of her walking yeah, through the grass she's walking through the grass over over and, and over, over and, and over, over and, and you're like what? which is made worse like, by the fact it's the same grass looping and looping exactly right, right. Yeah, yeah yeah and it almost seems like she's walking like super fucking fast because right. the way the grass is like whipping by her face so it makes it look dynamic but what's actually happening is incredibly boring yes, right exactly. if they shortened it it would have been perfect but it, it just goes on too long there's several clips that kind of do that same which process. i mean i feel like it's almost like uh the style of anime within you know the time that it came out because i feel like a lot of times when it comes to uh people riding off on the in the distance or something on horse or something it's just the same frame over and over again oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like hovering kind of like but an they, old nes game where it's just the background looping and looping right and looping. right right but they usually change up like the camera view or something but not in this <laughs> yeah i mean look at the way she was uh walking and her pigtails were bobbing up yeah. and down and it's literally the exact same thing right well over, even when vampire hunter d actually arrives on scene for the first time on his horse it's the same thing. It's like a long silhouette shot of him, like behind the sunset, right. and it's very long. You're just like, okay, we get it. He's a badass. He's cool. <laughs> He's coming in like a cowboy, but still, like, way too long. I honestly didn't have a problem with that part of it, but I, again, I was watching it at a slightly faster speed. But I like it. I, but we've talked about this before. I love old westerns. Like, I think that the Man Without a Name trilogy is some of the best cinema ever. So when it's that kind of delivery, I'm like, all right. I'm way more patient with that than in any other genre I feel. Like, especially I love the ending of the first one. Like, it was very much had that western kind of feel that I dig. Yeah. But you guys both seem to like the bloodlust better, right? I feel like I just, I like stylistically uh, bloodlust as far as uh, the graphics and everything. Yeah, I mean, like, the fighting was more interesting. Yeah, agreed. I'll give you that. So, the week that... Bloodlust came out April 21st, 2001. Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles and Freddy got 
fingered. Yeah. Uh, I would watch Freddy Got Fingered <laughs> ten times before I'd watch this movie again. I'm not saying I didn't like I like it at all, but when you like, we could logistically do Freddy Got Fingered on the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> Between him caning that girl's legs and the kid getting mutilated to death by that damn propeller, like. Isn't that the daddy? Would you like sausage? One? Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> is it? Is that? That's the one where he feeds the snake, right? That's Road Trip. Oh, that's yeah. Road oh, Trip. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> and Road Trip has Horatio Sands farting through a piece of French toast and feeding it to the guy from The New Guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's awful. It's so bad. Now, it, we'll move on a little bit. <laughs> There's so many, like, I'm going to sound like such an ignorant slut, and for that, I am truly sorry. I don't know fuck all about how to pronounce things. So the original was... Directed by Toyu Ishida, the 2000 version was Yoshiaki Kawajiri. Now here's the thing, going through statistics, we're gonna go both of them contemporaneously because it's kind of perfunctory. When we get into the narrative stuff, we will stick to one and then the other. I won't ping pong because that'll probably annoy the fuck out of you as much as it's annoying me to say out loud. The, the films, so obviously you're both very familiar with Mr. Ishida and Mr. Kawajiri's work. I mean, because you know what anime is, I assume that you're right. very yes. well versed. So I'm not going to even broach the topic about what else they've done. No, you don't need to. Yeah, it's, it's obvious to everybody. I mean, written by, so Hideyuki Kikuchi, like, you know, I quoted before perfectly, um, you know, when we like my <laughs> taglines better than Chad's. He did the novel, then Yasushi Hirano did the screenplay for the original, and then Yoshi, Yoshikiaki... Kawajiri, Brian Irving, Ellen Moore, and Jack Fletcher did the 2000 version. What the fuck happened? They sell out <laughs> to the white <laughs> bastards? Uh, yeah. Kill whitey. I hate all white people. <laughs> except my chubby baby. Maybe not her mom, but I definitely hate myself. <laughs> I, upon editing this show, has brought a whole new level of self-loathing. We're like, fuck, why did I say that? <laughs> So the second one is based on a book. What do you think the subtitle is of that book? Hint, it's not Bloodlust. Mm -hmm. Demon Death Chase. Which what? You th yeah, because really? he's like chasing a, a carriage is the only thing I could think of. But I was like, that doesn't make any butt-fucking sense. That's strange. Huh. Huh. So, um, you can imagine my sincere disappointment. People recommended the soundtrack of the original. People were like, oh yeah, listen to the work, blah, 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 blah. And so I woke up the soundtrack of the original, and I see your song. And I'm like, because I, of course, do some research before I watch the thing. So I'm like, Elton? My boy Elton's going to be in this? Sick. <laughs> it's by Tetsuya Kamuro and Naoto Kaine. It has a subtitle of D-Mix. Words can't describe my disappointment. <laughs> D-mix. D-mix. Which is like, I get that it's like a play on, you know, it's dumb mix, but it's also Vampire Hunter D-mix. Clearly before DMX. <laughs> D-mix gonna <laughs> give it to you. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to move on to nicknames, nicknames, brick names? Yes, yeah, sure. let's do it. Do you either of you have any that you'd like to get out of your system <laughs> first? Because I have only one that I care about saying. I mean, mine isn't very clever. Uh, I would just call D the man in black. Oh, it yours is way more complimentary. <laughs> I was going to call him D's nuts. Oh. I, like, I like that expression. I always like asking people if they ever use CDs. And people are like, no, I don't use CDs. And it's like, so you don't want to see D's nuts? <laughs> oh, God. I say that in court all the time to <laughs> judges, and I make eye contact. <laughs> it works out real well. Anyway, um, actually... Let's do, let's do a fun thing. I'd like to cast the people with live actors. Does that sound fun? Okay. D, is anyone out there... So you had mentioned Liam, Liam Neeson, who sounded like it. Yep. But I, I, I counter you. Okay. And I know that you're going to agree with me. You want to know why? Because I think Keanu Reeves... I knew you were going to say it. I knew you were going to say it. Oh, boy. Because so I was like, you know what? It, it works. It works. <laughs> right? I remember being in middle school and casting Keanu as my dream Goku. That's how long this dude's been doing martial arts and being badass. 
You don't have to do any fucking like, makeup. He's, he's pale as yeah. fuck. I mean, he already has black, beautiful hair. You just put him in a stupid hat. He basically, like, he yeah. basically doesn't age. Right. So he's a he damn might damn as well be a vampire. Damn peel. Damn peel. And here's damn another damn thing. Peel. You never hear about him finger-fucking girls who get out of the shower and they're like, hey, you can do whatever you want to me. <laughs> Raw dog. And he's he wouldn't do it. Keanu's a nice person. <laughs> yeah, that's also because his girlfriend died and so did his daughter or whatever. And don't fuck with his dogs. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't have one in this movie, but maybe we, <laughs> we just, we, that's what we could do. The adaptation, we could change the face in his hand that's terrifying to like a little puppy's face. <laughs> well, There's a ghost dog in it, but it bites him. Yeah, what a dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a jaguar. It was a jag. Oh, was it a jaguar? It was a jaguar. Okay. Jaguar. Jaguar. Some sperm looking thing. That so we're going to call him the man in black. It, we're going to call him the man in black like three times, and I think we're going to call him D's nuts because it's shorter the rest of the time. No, <laughs> no that's, that's, fine. that's fine. D's nuts works. I like the man in black, though. I was singing it, Johnny Cash. It, it, it reminded me of um, the Dark Tower series. Okay. I can see that for sure. Right. Because he's, he's, got he's got that like cowboy kind of feel to him, even though he's a hunter. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. The way you say cowboy reminds me of Kid Rock. Is that offensive? Well, I was just about to say, I feel like how cool would, how much cooler would this be if uh, he comes riding into Cowboy? I'm a cowboy, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Riding that night for the sleep all day. <laughs> like, oh, fuck, Which is perfect if you're a watch, vampire. I don't need to watch yeah. anything else. Holy shit. <laughs> Kid Rock is a weeboo. Oh, my God. <laughs> it makes so much sense. I ride at night, sleep all day, because I'm a vampire. He's a damn peel. No, he's aged. I'm a damn peel, he's, baby. He's, he's aged, aged <laughs> quite a bit, so maybe he's not a damn peel. Oh, not like no, Keanu. I'm not a wool. Not like Keanu. Doris Lang, Doris Lang is the main girl, right? Yep. Yes. I was going to call her panty britches because okay. you see her panties like two minutes into the movie. I mean, and this is... And consistently throughout. Following that up, <laughs> I, w- I was going to say schoolgirl because of her stupid schoolgirl outfit, but... <laughs> Between panty britches and schoolgirl, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> doesn't sound very good. Yeah, no, now I feel like we want to change it and like have a little more respect. So we'll call her a strong, independent woman. We'll call her Sue. S I W. Yeah. All right. Pigtails. I was gonna say pigtails. Pigtails. Oh, we'll call her pigtails. That's it's more innocent that way. Okay. It's well, less condescending. Me saying strong, independent woman I mean, has a is, sense of this is also it. following what we said. Prior to that, oh, panty bridges. Yeah, and you're like, oh, it makes her sound innocent. Yeah, pigtails, <laughs> definitely. It's so good. Brian, can you improvise a song about panty bridges? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Jen, can you improvise a song about panty bridges? I don't think so. What if I give you a fatty bo batty beat? Uh, still don't think so. <laughs> Damn it. I can't do it. I've already sang on this episode seven times in five minutes. <laughs> Is somebody's Count- name Greco Roman? Yeah. Yes. That is Greco. fucking awesome. That's the mayor's that's son. The, he's an asshole. Yeah, the main henchman dude. Why does he get a cool name like Greco Roman? Or no, that's the yeah yeah. He's the dandy. That's a fucking style of wrestling. It is wrestling. Wrestling. I'm Dan Henderson. I'm made out of leather and meanness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna he's throw the, the same son, one right? punch twenty times in a fight. What'd you say? He's the mayor's son. Yeah. Right? Yeah yeah. So we yeah anyway Count Magnus Lee. Just mm. Well, who's gonna play Doris in real life? Oh shit! Oh yeah, that's right. Winona Ryder. <laughs> I can see that. I get yeah with Keanu for yeah, sure. I can totally see that. Well, especially like Edward Scissorhands era when she has like the shitty colored hair because it reminds me of her shitty colored hair. Reminds me of uh, I can imagine her when um, the movie with her and Cher, mermaids. Uh, yes, I think right? so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can yeah. totally see her as, as like that age range. Awesome. I don't, I'm not trying to like. Blocky. No, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Honestly, only reason, I, only reason she's I know. She's in like Elephant Man and Tea with Mussolini, right? That's all I know. Only reason I know that is because it. I've seen it probably twice within the past year, just ah. randomly on TV. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it was really weird. You like have a but TV channel dedicated to I don't know mermaids Mich- as a show. You know, Michelle had watched it earlier. Uh, you know, prior to me seeing it, and I was like. I don't know, maybe 35, 40 minutes in, like, where the fuck are the mermaids at? There are no mermaids no. in this entire film. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I was like, come on, where are some, some hot chicks? Going? <laughs> hot chicks up top, fish I want down some, bottom. Yeah, whatever, I want some you know? fucking seashell titty bras. <laughs> Nothing. That's bullshit. Yep, exactly. I resent this decision. All right, Count Magnus Lee. 
Christopher Lee is the only person who can play that. It, it's named after him, right? Christopher Lee is the only person that can. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Um, my nickname for him. <laughs> I would just call him fucking Cosby. I call him Bill Cosby because <laughs> he's a creepy old man that likes the little girls. <laughs> wow. I was going to call him Count Dooku. I think we go with Bill Cosby. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> Now, I'm never going to be able to look at any kind of red jello again without thinking of this movie and that game. Uh, Dan Lang, who's a little guy. I'm a little redneck with a rifle. Get the fuck out of here, you mean cloud. I yeah, love this kid. So he, he basically is um, her father. Right? Oh, yeah. It's like the absent Get father. Get your coochie like and your little, bitches. Yeah. It's a little kid that becomes a dad. I don't know what we would call him, but... Jed? Um, Want to pull your weight around here, friend? I guess. I want to. What's the. What's the guy from The Lost Boys? I just wanted to put him in there because. Michael. Michael? Or Sam? Or the Frog Brothers? Yeah, one of the Frog Brothers because they're in every vampire Edgar. movie, so they have to be in this one too. Corey Feldman. Corey. There you go. Okay. I'll call him Corey Feldman. You're Who is the Corey? lesser Tommy you, Jarvis? No, no, no. Don't call him. That's what I want. No, so him. we're asking what, what would you the nickname for him be? Oh, the nickname. Oh, God. Well, I'll also take Corey Feldman playing him, but it has to be I like mean, him as a kid. A right, right, no, no, no. He's him creepy is, uh, as fuck hey, that could be now. Both. <laughs> yeah, he's that really could be both the nickname and who could play. <laughs> what we did with the last guy. All right, let's call him Corey. Corey, uh, Greco Roman. We're gonna call him Dan Henderson. I like it. Done deal. Yeah. Who plays him in the movie? Oh shit! You know what's funny? His hairstyle and everything totally remind me of like uh, Patrick Swayze. Like oh, wow. <laughs> we went so far apart. I honestly am amazed. I was gonna say Jack McBrayer. Who the fuck is that? He's you, you'd know him if he's. I'll pull up a picture of him. He's the guy who played uh, Fix It Felix and Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> you still oh, have oh, not given me anything. Yeah. Shut up, you! I'm pulling it up. <laughs> he's this blonde guy. Oh no! It's so perfect. <laughs> he's like just imagine him being shitty to someone. Oh. Hey, woman, get, get me to a nunnery. I don't know. I love yeah, it. I can see that. Okay. Do you, so do you have anybody? So you're Patrick Swayze. I'm Jack McQueer. Chad, do you have anyone? <laughs> Not that will be any of those. Well, come, come on. You have to try. Come on, Daddy. Mommy oh. could do it. Dwight from The Office. Why do we have it? <laughs> See? There you go. You can't purposely sabotage this shit, Chad. <laughs> So Dan Henderson is being played by someone. Move him. Yeah, so you know who I'm going to say? For Countess Lamika Lee, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say Steve Buscemi. There you go, Chad. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to phone him too. Oh, God, I can just imagine Steve Buscemi's face on the phone. <laughs> like, I got tits. Pump his fucking ass, chick. Yeah. I don't Fuck watch anything with him in it, though. For sure. <laughs> I would love it. See, who would she? Well, Chad and I will be over here talking about nicknames. You come up with a good one. Okay. Hey, Chad. What, what do you got, buddy? A nickname for a pompous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We've already done daddy issues on the show, so that can't be used. Hmm. We can call her True Blood because she's all about her bloodline, and it's a vampire reference to a show I never watched that uh, had sex panthers. That works. I How about this? Show. How about is this? it as bad as I think it is? Oh, it is. Oh, dude. And when I heard there were, like, werewolf panthers, I was like, no. It's one of those things where it's, like, so bad that you just keep watching. <laughs> With half a chub. Yeah. We're going around full circle here. Um, Kirsten Dunst. Oh, wow. Ah, I yep. would have... Okay, in that cir circumstance, I would like to make a motion to the court, if we can, to make Kirsten Dunst, Doris, and Winona Ryder uh, this broad Countess Lamika Lee. Just at the very least because of their hair color. Anyway. Yeah. Renato Ryder, I think, plays a better bitch. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. They're drawn almost exactly the same as one has dark yeah, hair. Who, who hair. played um, Wednesday Adams again? Christina Ricci. Yeah, what about Christina My Ricci? My one and only love. No, right. she could be a good job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anytime I see any woman with a black sweater dress or sweater and white collar in public and my wife sees me, she's like, Wednesday Adams, huh? And she like, glares at me like I'm eyeball fucking this person. The worst. Are you though? Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be self conscious about it, Brian. 
judgmental Brian. So Ray, Jin, Ray Ginsei, Ginsei? Let's call him Ginko Biloba. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh no, he's Rufio, obviously, because of his fucking haircut. Rufio. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And who plays him? Mm. Paul Bettany. I'd Paul be down Bettany. for that. Who's Paul Bettany? Uh, the Vision. He was the guy in Legion, remember? Oh, yeah. No, We're going to see that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of ripped, but kind of like strung out looking. Uh, D's left hand. <laughs> mm. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Dude, uh, that's His awesome. His face is wrinkly. Yeah, just... <laughs> that's awesome casting. I have nothing better that's than perfect. that. That's <laughs> perfect. And as far as what we're going to call him, Steve. I mean, honestly, that, that's such a funny association. Yeah. I'm fine with it. That was good. We're going to... Sp- I don't give a fuck about the doctor or the mayor or the sheriff or the three sisters who are the snake woman of the midwitch. No, they're all very short roles. We'll yeah. just call them by their titles because doc, mayor, sheriff, and sisters are easy. Just imagine, like, you know, the wisecracking palm and it's like uh, Steve Buscemi <laughs> from um, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Armageddon who's like, no, Bruce Willis, I didn't finger fuck your daughter. <laughs> no, no, no. He's like, why the fuck do I got to be Mr. Pink or no, no... Did he say that? I think yeah, he did say yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's him. So, D is a D-H-A-M-P-I-R, Dampier, and then they call him a Dan Peel in the next one. I wonder which is right. That's but, fun. See, that's why I, I, I thought that's what they said, is yeah. Dan Peel. But I think that the subtitles I had were, like, off or something. I think the first one's correct. I think it's Dampier. Yeah. I so. think that you are both right and spectacular little men of valor and courage to even be on this show with me, so... Oh, thank you, sir. Would you like to get into the recapitation? Yes, do it. Absolutely. Good, Jed. I'm glad you wanted to because you're the one doing it this week. (laughs) Actually, no, wait, Brian, you're the one doing it this week because you laughed condescendingly at our friend Chad. Oh, fuck. This will teach you a lesson. (laughs) All right, well, let me just pull it up on the Wikipedia and I'll just read it right off of here. (laughs) Um, no, so... um, D goes through town, um, meets up with a girl who gets attacked by a noble. Um, she is bitten. She is outcast from all of the town folk. She can't get any supplies. Um, she hires D to um, kill the noble to basically free her from his possession. That's weird. Yep. Nicely done. Now, Chad, are you going to walk us through the slay by play this week? Uh, sure. Let's do First it. and foremost, I'm going to tell you all. I'm going to compare this extremely to Shane, Yojimbo, Fistful of Dollars, and Last Man Standing, because three of those are the same fucking movie. But I think that's why I like this one better than the next one, because of that love of the whole wandering stranger things. So I'm sorry. You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, so how's that going to work? Am I... We're doing a recapitation for just one, or are we going to do a recapitation for both? We're going to do the recapitation for the next one once we finish this one and we move on to the next one. Yeah, okay. we're going to hustle. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of plot, we can agree. No, like, it's pretty much not. just us talking about the visuals that we like. Like, the fact that he gets siphoned off his life energy by a three-headed snake woman for a day? Like, they talk about hours of time passing. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah Boring. They're also, they also mention, like, oh, well, you know, a normal person would be, like, what, minutes? Dead by now, yeah. It's like minutes, and they're like, oh my god, I'm in such ecstasy, <laughs> sucking your life force. I'm like, sucking the life force, huh? <laughs> you know, it could have been a better visual. <laughs> Seriously. You got three mouths, and none of them are on an orifice that emits some kind of bodily fluid. I guess well, you can call the epidermis something that would emit a bodily fluid to be sweat, so I just corrected myself. So you can't do it. Go ahead, Jim. All right, so opening starts with, what did we call her? Penny <laughs> Bridges. <laughs> Penny Bridges. <laughs> um, she's walking through grass hunting a demon dinosaur. Uh, she chases it down she with her horse. Fucking kills Denver. <laughs> she kills the demon dinosaur. Or what she thinks is kills. Wait, kills hold it. on. The first thing in the movie is the fucking castle from the dark crystal in front of a red. Oh, moon. that's true. With a little voiceover. Yeah, to the point where I was like. Literally, is that the castle from the Dark Crystal? Question mark, question mark, question mark, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, that's three question marks I'm reading it right now. Did you research it? What? Oh, it's definitely not. It's just, <laughs> it was a word But yeah, it looks a lot like it. So much of the aesthetic of this reminds me of that and 
Chad and I were talking about this, uh, there's a movie called Wizards that Ralph Bakshi did, where this evil wizard uh, is opposing his brother, and the evil wizard finds Nazi propaganda in a post-apocalyptic future and uses that to rally the forces of evil to try and take over the world. It's weird, it's overly sexual for a kid's movie, but it's <laughs> awesome. Like, you have to be in the right headspace for it, but it is a total trip to watch. So that's, the, I think that we had talked about that, the animation style being like this, right, and those right. made this way more easily accessible for me, the uh, uninitiated anime watcher. Sure, right. go ahead. So, um, she shoots the demon, and uh, she thinks it's dead. Uh, the demon then uh, bites the horse. She then kills the demon yeah, again. That's, that's when Michelle was like, Michelle, out. Yeah. Fucking dead horse. <laughs> dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> I also took a note and said, a lot of weird anime butt shots. Oh, they would you like to know how long into the film before you see her panties? Two yes. minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> I took yeah. a note of that because I was like, this, I, that's an anime trope to me, right? It's yep. like panties right. everywhere. There you go. But to be fair, I feel like that's her outfit is actually I feel like a little timid <laughs> compared to some <laughs> outfits that you that come out of. Uh, yeah. Japan. Well, it was eighty five, and this was uh, one of the first movies that they geared towards like teenage boys and uh, adults. Makes I can sense. Dig it. With yeah. uh, some nudity and a lot of blood. So. <laughs> she had a bunch of jiggles when she was running too. Isn't it, isn't it great how? Um, I feel like this carries over to um, video games a lot too, where um, you'll see like a like a, a warrior in full plate for like a male, and it's like completely covered in plate, and then a girl, a female character, she's got like two thimbles on her nipples and yeah. nothing else, and of course it you know, exactly. got like a sheriff badge on her cooch, and she's like, behold my legendary armor. And you're like, um, you're like, no, that's not stopping shit. <laughs> <laughs> See, did you just know? I just I just grabbed your titty right now. Like, nothing. She's like, I couldn't feel it because of the mystic aura. <laughs> the yeah. mystic aura leaves no discretion. Exactly. So. Get so. thee to a nunnery. <laughs> so after she kills the demon, a werewolf appears. Which is what the fuck? Out of nowhere. And uh, rips off her cross necklace. Uh, then... The Noble Appears, which is a old, ancient vampire. Um, which, the werewolf... <laughs> sorry, I'm interrupting a lot, but isn't the, the, were, the werewolf is part of the circus, underground circus people that, like, protect... In the second one? Is that in the second one? Am I in the mix? second one, there is There's a werewolf, but it like comes out of the stomach oh, okay, of a guy. Mind, never, but yeah, that's, yeah, part yeah, that's right, okay. But he clearly is a familiar of some sort Correct. to the vampire because right. he breaks he the necklace and then just and then sprints off. Right, appears. right. He doesn't yeah. touch her at all other than like his one fingernail just rips off the necklace. Right, okay. And they do a slow motion of it breaking kind of like when Batman's parents... I like, thought kill. the same thing! <laughs> it's like, did this bitch just finish watching Zorro? She just got Bruce Wayne? Uh, <laughs> anyway. Everybody Wayne Chung. <laughs> so uh, the noble appears and exposes himself, which is kind of weird. Yeah, he just dude. opens up his cape like really weird. It reminds me so of the flashing you're, gremlin. What, you, what you're trying to tell me is Bill Cosby <laughs> appears, exposes oh, right. himself yep. to the girl. <laughs> he's standing on something. He's like super, he's like eight feet tall and he just opens up his cape. It's kind of creepy. Fades to black. <laughs> now here's yep. a crazy thing. We're less than five minutes into the movie. Yeah. Let me, like, the, I'm really glad I didn't see this as a kid because I would be an anime nerd now. We have a dinosaur. We have a gory shot through the neck where its head almost falls off. It kills a horse. You see jiggly boobs. You see panties. You see a fucking crazy werewolf. It's yep. a cool design that you wish was in the movie more. Then you see this giant intimidating vampire. Yep. And you get some sacrilege with the neck, with the cross necklace coming off. That is exactly me at age 13. I can't believe I didn't see Which, this. Which, and I feel like right off the bat, you find it, or she mentions that it's a no. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a noble. Which is great, because she doesn't go, you're a noble. That means that you're a vampire. <laughs> right, book exactly. Sex. Exactly. Right. No, it's just that it's a no. I like those lived-in worlds. I, I, you know, prattle on about it quite extensively. Yeah, so it's Chad, a little bit easier when you have, like, manga to back it up and stuff, so. Oh, yeah, there's, like, hundreds of pages, with women, if not thousands. Uh, when we go to the landscape later on, did I, I, this is a question, this isn't me interjecting, because I want to. The blue little creature, the frogmen that are like scuttling along, uh -huh. did those remind you of the Dark Crystal or... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can yeah. see that, absolutely. But they also reminded me kind of the design of Smeagol in the Return of the King, the Fellowship of the Ring adaptation. Yeah. Mm, eggs! That's actually the Hobbit one. 
Right. I'm sorry. Chad, keep going. All right, so uh, we then cut to some scenic shots of a destroyed world, um, kind of like some deserty, broken buildings everywhere, and uh, sunset or sunrise, whatever. Black lightning. Oh, yeah, black lightning. That's cool, right? Yeah. Um, and then a man on a horse silhouette walking towards the camera. Who is? Vampire Hunter D. Who we called him D's Nuts. <laughs> or the man in black. Oh, that's, that's right. The man in black. <laughs> uh, so then he comes across the girl that was attacked in the beginning. Um, She's kind of a B-word to him. Is there yes. a tongue in your mouth, or are you just being rude? Or is that a sword just for show? Maybe you'll say something if I take it from you. And then she uses a whip. Then she freaking whips him. But what's dope, so it's like a whip, <laughs> and then it becomes like a cat of nine tails that's yeah. like sentient, and then it wraps all up on him, and he just looks at her like, really? So it's like some <laughs> magical whip that she never uses again in the yeah, rest of the that's And true. she never shows anything similar. Fuck! <laughs> we should have called her Devo. Unless, uh... <laughs> We didn't have to call the old lady Devo in Castle Freak because she dies two minutes in the movie. She never pulls it out again <laughs> until, you know, the bedroom. The bedroom scene. <laughs> I'm sad, guys. This is my one shot. Okay. Um, anyway, um, these nuts, or Men in Black, <laughs> breaks free of the whip that... By doing nothing. It. By doing nothing, it just <laughs> shatters and disappears, but her whip is still whole as well, so that's kind of weird. Uh, but then she says, oh, you are a real vampire hunter, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, God, don't hurt she me. She literally just flips, and she's, like, begging him. It was just a test. She offers her body for his help. Mm, yeah, she does. Mm. It was a little awkward. <laughs> she reveals that she's been bitten, quote, the kiss of a powerful noble. Yes. And, you know, it takes until 10 minutes and 13 seconds into the film before you actually see Vampire Hunter D's eyes, because he's in silhouette. Oh, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I, he's just, it, nothing ever changes with him, and that's what's really cool about it. Right? His whole style, the whole, like, mystique. Swag. Swag. That's yeah, what the kids well. say on the YouTubes now. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> They're like, I, I have some swag with my Fortnites. <laughs> is that a thing? Well, they're flossing. Guys, this is why we only have 97 view, <laughs> viewers. <laughs> All right, you're going to keep doing this. I'm going to step back for a couple seconds, and I'm just going to floss and see if that helps our viewership. <laughs> Can you really do that? Oh, it, it's so easy. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, oh, six. Five, One, yeah. two, three. Wow. The pelvic thrust is right sorry. next to me right now. I learned Jesus. that from watching kids at minor league hockey games. <laughs> okay, so uh, they go back to Doris's farm, which is... God damn, what's her name again? Diva? Uh, Diva? That's Panty Bridges. <laughs> Panty Bridges. Devo. Devo. Devo McPanty Bridges. <laughs> I like the I like the theme here. You're like, uh, what are we calling her? Flap Princess Flappy Buns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be a derivative of myself, so let's but then Devo's derivative of Castle Freak episode. God I suck at being a host. <laughs> uh, so they go back to the farm where you meet her brother. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's kinda of just loudmouth. He's like shooting a cloud demon that is eating sheep. Which yeah. rips the flesh... Okay, you're not giving enough credit. It's a red <laughs> cloud with lightning that rips the flesh off of tiger-striped rams. Yep. Yeah, and the kid's just running around like no big fucking deal. Completely. Like, yeah, he's just like, like, like okay, this game, this thing laser. can just like swarm <laughs> me at, in any moment and be dead. And he's like, ah, fuck it, I'm going to shoot it with my fucking rifle. And it does nothing. D, E, D, yep. dead. <laughs> Uh, the three of them go into town. Doris gets, uh, she, uh, meets up with the mayor's son, and she kind of gets a Me Too moment. Yep. <laughs> Very much so. Very awkward. Bill Cosby goes, tries to go raw dog, and she's like, well, bam! No, not no, Bill Cosby. No, Bill Cosby is the noble. Yeah, that's the big noble guy. Oh, this is Dan Henderson, that's right. Dan this Henderson, is Dan yeah. Henderson. H-bomb. <laughs> he pretty much says, like, I know you've been bit, and if you don't, you know, do me, I'm gonna tell everybody. Do you think vampirism can be sexually transmitted? Here's hoping. I don't know. I mean, you watch True Blood, don't you know? <laughs> uh, so, uh, Panny Bridges, or whatever her name is, is something somewhat honorable. Uh, so anyway, then that's where... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's weird being in the middle, huh? It is. We took I'm Jake out of the corner, because he was behaving, so... 
No, it's because I'm the loudest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> and I've bled into everybody else's microphones. No, Sorry that's, about it. That's, that's not true. <laughs> so this is when, the... uh... <laughs> this Oh, is so a... we get Dora showering. If I may, we get butts. We get boobs. We oh, wait, almost no. get veggie. Did you get, yeah, the whole knockout and then... Yeah, yeah. The whole knockout. Well, Dan shoots up, uh... Dan, or uh, yeah. what is, little boy shoots Dan Henderson off the cliff and then they end up home and she's showering. Right. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I was excited about getting to almost Vagine, if you don't mind. Almost Vagine. And so then... She's, she, she's getting prepped to uh, offer herself. It's She's offering him not just the Vagine. She's offering him a life yeah, her with blood. the Vagine. Yeah, she's, she's like, like let's can, run off run together. Away. Like, when does that ever work? You know, we'll hold hands and raw dog. <laughs> you had to work it in. <laughs> That's what she said. Before she was raw dogged! Uh, again, uh, this is also when Dee's Nuts like, has a full on orgasm. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh. oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he gets, he gets super close to her. His uh, fangs start coming out real hard. Where? <laughs> and she even says, It's alright, take my blood. And, I'm like, Whoa. and she says, she opens her robes. D, please. And what you would really want to say in that situation is please, D. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like the, the just the question mark. D, please. Yeah. D, please. <laughs> D, please. <laughs> and of course, these nuts turns her down. He's like cold. Yeah. He's like you can't have so this D. He's a man of restraint. <laughs> this hand with this mouth on this hand is all I need. <laughs> he sucks in more than air, lady. Uh, so uh, then we cut to uh, Ray uh, finds this hand don't Dan spit. Henderson <laughs> and takes the the TBE, um, and then this is where. Then Ray you find then out uses that it on D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So D, um, D goes back to the castle, right? And then Ray uses it on D. No, he uses it in the front yard of. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, Ray then chops off his hand because oh, he that's chopped right. off. He's like payback. He yeah, his hand. Okay. And then, then the he evil stabs cloud. him in the heart. Yeah. So evil you cloud think he's dead? Over. Yeah, evil right. cloud comes over and is about to fucking disintegrate his ass. Yeah. So hand jobs like I better hurry this up so it eats some dirt. And then attaches itself to him and resurrects him just in time to yeah. kill the cloud, which turns into chunks of meat. Which is really weird, yeah, because he just like stabs it and it's like, oh. Yeah, like getting shot with lasers. Getting shot shit. with lasers, but my sword. Even though it's like a floating cloud that's uh, translucent and doesn't show any meat within it, I think it's kind of cool that it does show meat flying around everywhere because where the fuck would all that like ram, random ram meat go? Hell yeah. Right? True. Uh, so then, uh, da, 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 da. Ray tries, then, Ray then leaves and meets up with, uh, Cosby. Yeah. And, uh, and tries to kill Cosby because he won't turn him into a vampire. Oh, yeah, they're on their way to the wedding, right? Yeah, they're on their way to the wedding. Um, and this oh, part and was he has, cool. like, an unspoken understanding with the little boy where he's like, I'm not killing you, we are very similar interest little friend that's right oh, I thought yeah. that was a cool little moment yeah that was cool absolutely um and so basically Cosby just bashes the shit out of him mm -hmm. fucking pins him up against the wall and just destroys his face with when his it, mind yeah when his head explodes that is one of the coolest parts and I wish that it lingered on a little bit more but I you know the restraint they showed was kind of okay yeah uh so then they're going to the wedding um a whole bunch of demons all over big Fire. Um, it was a big fire pit. Yeah. Uh, and the, the homeboy goes to bite Doris and he gets stabbed in the eye. Yeah. He pulls the dagger out with his eye and there's another eye. I saw a really fun, endless gif that just kept looping. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. part was actually pretty cool. Uh, like yeah, I like that a lot. That was pretty neat. Did you like the fact that the Count's eyes glow red and then he becomes Super Saiyan Akuma from Street Fighter? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I can yeah. appreciate that. So then he starts, uh, this is where these nuts starts getting thrown all over the room with the same way that, uh, I wish they would have done something killed. different, but whatever. Well, that's what he says. Doesn't he say, like, well, you deserve to die better than the other guy? 
And he stops. Yeah, I think he does. I think he does. That's right. Well, and then he talks about you know the sacred ancestor, and it's established that he is the direct descendant of Dracula, and that sends a very strong message to Bill Cosby, who's yeah. like way. Well, yeah, it like more. flashes between like the picture, and then to, to uh, D, and then back right. to the picture over and over. Because he's trying to kill him, and he's like, oh, he's way stronger than I thought, and he keeps like looking at the facial features. Or... It's uncanny. So uh, then D's nuts stabs the fool to the wall. Cosby gets stabbed and stuck to the wall. Yep. Oh, there's um, a, a moment where the daughter asks if she should die for her nobility as everything's starting to crumble yeah, around. Yeah, and, and D's like, why the fuck would you die for nobility? Like, you're just like me. You can do whatever you want with your life. And oh, yeah, because she finds out that she's uh, a damn fear as well. Right. right. So I don't know if we expressly established that we, we made jokes about her mom, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Six. So she finds out, but she can't get over the fact that she's not like pure blood. She's like, "No, you guys bounce. I'm gonna go die with my dad." Yeah, yep. And Rocks so as cool. he dies, yeah, the whole castle starts to crumble. And, and she I, walks is that, into. Is that just something that like happens throughout like mythology when it comes to vampires or Dracula's or whatever? Like, is if the master of the house or the castle dies, like the castle just like falls into the ground or just, like, disintegrates. Well, it goes beyond that, because once he dies, it the shows, chasm. like, a time lapse as well. Yeah, it, Of, like, like generations fly, flying backwards. Whatever. Yeah. It, it shows, like, the sun crazy. setting and over and over and over and over and over, and then plants come back. It is it is the end of the Dark Crystal. Right. Like, it's no longer a dark castle, and, and that it becomes a, a, a very white, bright castle, but then there's the chasm, which kind of takes that place, and then it's this lush, fertile area. Paradise. I love this ending, so let's get to it. Because we also have a whole other movie to get to. <laughs> Do we, though? We're going to kind of blitz through it, I feel like. Because okay. this one's the more fun one for me. Yeah, that, yeah, agreed. That's where I started editing the last podcast. <laughs> okay, so. perfect. So, <laughs> it cuts, and there's the lush green flowers. There's the fields. Uh, D is on a horse overlooking a cliff. And he starts riding, and you see his silhouette on the road. And then you see, you see uh, panties and uh, Corey Feldman and they're like fucking yelling and it's we love you D <laughs> it's so it's, it just seems so random how they're just like screaming D over and over again D D we love you D and it's uh, it sounds super kiddish because again it's in English at least the version that I li- that we listen to right um, but, but it's, yeah. it's the ending of Shane where the little kid's calling after him right and he, he's a force of nature He's not going to be tethered. He has every reason to stay, but that warrior spirit, that Ronin heart, just pushes on into the, like, yeah. the wild blue yonder. Like, I love that. You know, I think maybe it started like Ryu from Street Fighter, where it's like, all right, I want a tournament. I'm going to keep wandering the earth until I find my place. I, I, I love that. that. I think that this one, B, a bloodlust is way overwhelming for me in a lot of ways, but B like the story structure of this is way fun. It feels familiar. The art style is more familiar. Well, and, and, and this movie uh, doesn't overcomplicate. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Which right. I think Vampire or Bloodlust Blood definitely Blood, does. Well, there's it, a fucking spaceship. Yeah. There's there's just. Uh, well, it's way into the future. There's also there's also <laughs> so many, so many extra characters with yep. extra layers that you right. don't need. Yeah, I'd rather so, have watched that as a trilogy. Where it's like a movie, of, an origin movie for D, a movie just about these fucking hunter guys, and then a movie where it's all of them crossing over in this Avengers kind of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, as far as classifying the first one, classic, trashic, tragic, go. Classic. 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 Yeah, yeah for sure. I was very pleasantly surprised by the whole thing. Um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I was. So, that came as a huge surprise. And then the second one, I think I kind of went into unfairly with higher expectations because the first one was such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, I I think I only liked the second one for the action. Yeah, I, the technical prowess is amazing. Right. Technical prowess, but, and again, also, um, they're... Pretty sweet characters, but there are just too yeah, many of them. Too exactly. Clearly, oh, right. uh, different styles of anime within as far as, like, the graphics are concerned. Oh, so, yeah. like, um... Visually, it seemed a little more pleasing for me. At oh, least. definitely. But I mean, that's come on, minor. 85? That's that's minor. I feel like I like the simplicity. I totally see why you. But think about it. The the only enemy I had up until that, 
then was like Dragon Ball Z. Which is essentially the same style. And it's the same time era, too, yeah. yeah. But, but like Akira, that, so here's the thing with Akira, is, that art is so amazingly spectacular yep. that I, I could just watch that. The stuff that happens in this movie, it's muddled, it's convoluted. Even Akira has some restraint and simplicity where this bloodlust doesn't, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. A lot of it's the texture and shading, where everybody just looks shiny and dirty. Right. I, I think also with like the action and powers or magic or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, you run into a lot of issues with it. You're like, well, it just doesn't seem... Like, if you compare it to like Ninja Scroll... They have, like, defined powers, and it's kind of interesting how right. he overcomes them in each instance, where this is just, like, completely random sometimes, and, and that's, you're like, that's whatever, one that, that happened. I really wish there wasn't one particular scene in Ninja Scroll, because mm. I think Jake would really appreciate it. <laughs> it's very short. It. I don't know. It, is, it is very short. But that scene fair. was necessary for you to see her powers. But it is, uh, yeah. It, it is a, the cliff notes. It is a great movie. <laughs> It is. It's really good. I actually really enjoy it. Shall we get into nicknames, nicknames, nicknames for Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust 2000? Sure, sure. D was... So D is still D's nuts. D's nuts. nuts. You got uh, Meyer Link, who's the vampire in this one. Uh, He is Rutger Hauer. He's Roy from Blade Runner, in my eyes. If you guys want to call him anything but Roy, that's fine. Anybody? Hmm. What's that? Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. From uh, Queen of the Dam. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool with either of those. Cool. We'll call him the stat. Uh, but his actor is Rucker Howe. Yeah. There okay. is no debate. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. also a little bit older. He's got the look. Uh, Layla. Layla! <laughs> they got me on my knees! So, who. Let, let, let's do nicknames. You can do nickname for her, and I will come up with a. Damn it! I had I already had the actress. I okay, had okay, okay. Let's switch it around then. I was gonna say Laura Dern, that Jurassic Park era Laura Dern. Okay, oh. I could totally see that. Okay. Mm. How about Flower Girl? This girl, yeah, I don't know. Laura Dern though is, I don't know. What? Then come up with something better. Backseat drive, you <laughs> motherfucker. Hey. I'll turn this show around. There's, um, what's her name from? Uh, Labyrinth. Jenna, Sarah? Jennifer Conn? What? <laughs> I could. I guess I could see it. That's kind of sacrilegious to me, but yeah. I, I well, know. But <laughs> Jennifer Connelly, I think, would do a capable job because she's a good actress, so that's fine. I, I still have I mean, Flower Girl. You know? Yeah. I got nothing. I like that ending a lot. That's one thing that redeems this movie, because this is another kind of, like, tragic poetry of an ending that I like. Yeah, I can see that. But we'll get to it, motherfuckers. Just strap it. <laughs> Charlotte Elborn. She should be the prissy bitch from Sex and the City. What is her name, Charlotte? <laughs> is that a thing? The brunettes? You, mm, this is the blonde with the short hair? Uh, no, no, no. Layla is the one blonde with short hair with the red jumpsuit. This oh, is, oh, okay. Oh, that okay. makes more sense for Flora. Oh, okay. No, okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, was, like, I was like, what? I was no, she's confused, like though. a badass and kind of like buff. That's why I liked Lord when she's like, was, I'll fight a fucking okay. Velociraptor, thinking, motherfucker. Right, that works for... I was we like got a, the characters mixed. You're both trying to make me feel <laughs> crazy and I whooped you. <laughs> I was thinking Charlize Theron, but yeah, that works too. Okay, I yeah, can take that, that with her being with, bl- uh, with Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde. Yeah. Let's Short call her Atomic Blonde then. Yeah, okay. Because she's got short hair and everything. There's Charlotte, we'll call her Sex in the City. Who gives a fuck who plays her? She's annoying. <laughs> Deep she annoys me so much. Steve Buscemi. <laughs> yeah, Still the same. <laughs> uh, Carmilla. Who the fuck is Car- Borgoff? We're not doing this. No. I'll just, okay, Borgoff, I remember, is the beard guy. Uh, I Grove is the sick Grove is weird the, dude. Grove is the ghost. Yep. That's all I'm going to remember. Yep. Moving on. No offense if you voice acted or animated any of those characters. They're, that's the thing. It's overwhelming. Oh, it's like the Magnificent Seven, D's, and then you meet a character so who's D's better than all. So mother them. is that head chick at the castle, the one with the weird head, like. Uh, yeah. I thought that she just induced a vision because D's dad is actually a vampire. She is not a vampire. I thought that's what it was. Is she was making him Maybe I heard that She had wrong. long black hair that went down, and then. Am I wrong? 
That might make sense. I, I, I for some might, reason, I... I was editing during this movie. <laughs> but yeah, I, all I remember is her saying, like, I did love your father or something. Yeah, I thought it was, that was his mother. So I didn't know if it was a vision or if it was, like, the truth. You never know if it's the truth when it's the villain, right? Just like truth. All right. Hold on. In the final seas of Layla... God damn it. Deal along with Layla. Damn it. Uh-huh. Yeah. They don't even yeah, talk about... Uh, 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 In a plot twist, Carmilla turns on Meyer, Link, and Charlotte as Carmilla had actually plotted to kill Charlotte all along. That's nice. But none of this talks about his mom. ghostly, ethereal form. Oh, shows him the vision of his mother. Yeah, right there. down so with his sword and returns to a normal. He strikes the vision down. Right there. So, yeah, so, so it's vampire not, she's not, a, she's not. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. She's, she's just manipulating him. Right, okay. Jedi mind tricks. Like all yeah. women. You're right? <laughs> Hypnotic pussy juice. That's my new prog rock band. <laughs> you could have that name if it's an all-girl band. Why is that? It's a it's a term of endearment now. <laughs> right? You ever call your wife? No. No? Uh, uh, Chad? No. <laughs> well, that's weird. Tell me how it goes. Yeah. Hell no. Can you do it when we're in the room? <laughs> Hell no. I don't want to get stabbed in the eye like Let's the other guy because right I'm going to grow up back. <laughs> All right. They're in the township. There's a bunch of action. There's a bunch of horses and carriages and laser eyes and... All the horses are fucking Cyclops from X-Men. And then this girl's like, I got titties and I'm sleeping and I got titties while I'm sleeping. I think it's, it shows a cool shot of like a dog getting like super fucking scared. Yeah. Right? It's like growling, like get the fuck away from me. Because exactly. it can't necessarily sense, it senses something. It doesn't know that it's a vampire. Yeah. And you see the rushing wind. And then so she, the window opens and up there like he's hanging upside down for some reason in her window. And he opens it up into the bat, and he flies at her. Ba -da -ba -ba! And then she's rushed out, and vampires rule the night. Their numbers are dwindling. Bounty hunters emerge. One is a done fear. Half human, half vampire. And all I could think of was Blade. All yes. I could think of was Dun Peel. <laughs> yeah. They kept saying Dun Peel. Like, I read it, and I, read, and I was like, Dun Peel. I, I, That's why I was like, Dan Peer. It's Dan Peer? It's, it's got to be an accent thing, right? Baby, I honestly I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. So he, uh, men with guns raised in rubble. So it's all these dudes who are surrounding, and they like have their guns drawn. And in comes D. I like the starch contrast with him being all black, because the old one he had blue and red in yeah. his costume. Yeah. This right. is all black, and but, he's in the direct sunlight. Right. So he looks like a fucking obelisk in 2001 exactly. where he's like this doesn't belong well it's it, it's like they're very much in like a washed out like desert town yeah. so everything's dusty it's white uh there's just dust everywhere and then you have this like pitch black like perfect essence of darkness right? absolutely yeah. I, I like i really like the western part so starting off this movie you have kind of a more advanced little township, but then you come here and it's the West again. So again, I was like, all right, let's do this, cowboy. And then it fucking goes to a spaceship. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> but effectively, the, the guy, and the old man, his daughter, Charlotte, has been kidnapped, they think. Ooh, plot twist. And they effectively offer him, what is it? 10 oh, mil. 10 mil. And then he's like, nah, dog, it's going to be 20 mil. He's like, all right, to either bring her back alive or fucking kill the chick Which, and bring him her, her, her... Well, they don't ever establish that he has to bring the ring, but that's what they right, decided. Right. right. Which is... Did you think that it was kind of crazy that he's like, oh, here's 10 mil, and it was like literally four coins? Yeah, in the back. yeah just like, what in the coins. fuck? Inflation is a serious <laughs> problem here. And he's like, double it. He's like, all right, here's eight coins. <laughs> so... There is a pretty cool scene that comes out. There's a large steam-powered truck, which reminded me of Steam Boy, which is another anime I had actually seen. Thank you very much. I got it for free on my PSP, if you believe how long ago that shit was. What's a PSP? Yeah, right? <laughs> and so they pull up, and there's this hobo, and he's like, <laughs> and they're like, Wait, how is that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he has a, a red nose, and they pull down his little clothing around his neck, and they find the bite marks, and when his face changes, they kick his ass down a well. I like I like the change. 
It yeah. is really cool. Way more like severe. I thought these were like more mutants than vampires. So. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. they call them zombies at one point. So I was like, all right, sure. I don't even know. <laughs> but uh, they're the, a lot darker looking too. Like they just yeah super like dark in the face and everything. Maybe they're mutants that were turned to vampires. I don't mm-hmm. know. Oh, they maybe. don't establish it because there's so much fucking stuff that happens in this movie. You, you get overwhelmed. You, but, they just fly by everything. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but when they actually like uh, the town or like when all the vampires do come, they are doing like the zombie walk. Exactly. And you're kind of like, oh, that's, that's and okay. also <laughs> in this movie, there's a big problem here. This action sequence is so intense that it makes the next 40 minutes seem boring. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Because this one rules. You get the introduction of super cool visual characters who you don't know fuck all about. And also, like, from there on, you don't care, really. They are all essentially the characters from Blade 2. Dude! Yeah. Yeah. That's what my... Like, honestly, if they had redone PlayStation 2's The Bouncer with these characters and fucking (laughs) vampires, I would still be playing that game now, Yeah. 18 years later. It was cool. He had, like, heat-seeking bows. Or, uh, bolts. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh... Fucking cool. The lights... Oh, well, no. I mean, the dagger fucking thing. Right. Uh, what was the other guy? Huge hammer. Yeah, that shit was dope with the paint on his face. And, and the girl, girl has a big old just, gun. She has, what, the rocket launcher? And the, the fucking motorcycle unicycle from hell. That thing is dope. <laughs> I was like, that's such a cool visual thing. And then it has no payoff. Mm-hmm. Then no. later, she sits under a tree because she's afraid of rain. <laughs> that's the same movie, fellas. Yeah. What you believe in, buddy? Nope. Oh, there's great music in this scene, too. So I'm going to describe some of the action. You guys just nod in approval for the people watching on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Zombie has vampire approaches. The cruciform <laughs> spotlights shun, run over somebody, wow. fight against the <laughs> shot. Vampires tear down a giant crucifix blocking the way. They get out of the truck. Cool crossbows, arm gauntlets. It's zombie time. Kills dozens of them. <laughs> one tries to run behind a... Tr- oh, that's so dope. When Beardy, the one runs behind a tree and Beardy uses his gauntlet yeah. and yeah. shoots it. And, and shoots it, goes around it, and nails him. Uh, yeah, it's fucking little cool. wanted shit there. Pretty dope. I did like the uh, lights though when they turn them on and it's like the crosses. That was super cool. Right. Doesn't happen again. Nope. No fair. There's this. I like this. There's a story of the squirrel and the owl, which is kind of like the grasshopper and the ant. Basically, like the ant forages all winter and the grasshopper is gonna die because he was just lazy. But then the ant has sympathy. In this version, well, some of those versions, the ant just eats it alive, which yeah. is kind of dark. So the squirrel <laughs> hoards all the food, and then the, the owl comes and eats the squirrel, and the squirrel's thinking, oh, fuck, all the food's going to waste. Yep. Yep. It's <laughs> such a dark thought. Like, it's very nihilist. But it's funny, because you could tell that they don't get it, but they're laughing anyway. Does that remind you both of uh, Batman, the killing joke? Never mind. <laughs> I wanted a resounding yes, and you both got way contemplative. You should have just agreed with me. It's a comics thing you agree with me. Yep, absolutely. Sure. The, so uh, D uses his hand and shoves it into the dirt to tell how old, uh, old the tracks were. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I feel like um, there's a lot of little cool powers that he doesn't show. Or, right, like I feel like he, there's more to him than what they let on in the movie. You right. would say that there's more than meets the eye. <laughs> Is that an anime? Did I do a thing? I... Maybe? Autobots. Da, 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 da. What? You don't. Transformers? <laughs> this this honky motherfucker well, is joking, right? Yeah, no. No, I've never watched Transformers. What the actual fuck? You watch Naruto but not Transformers? <laughs> wow, I thought we were above shaming and judging people. Yeah. I am, I'm mm. not judging you. I'm, yeah. I'm shocked. Anyway. Oh, okay. I am shocked. I'm not judging you. You can have your little mm. quaint Naruto thing. But Transformers changed the world. Do yourself a favor and watch uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's 26 up. episodes. <laughs> you know how many hours of my life that is that I'll never get back? That's cool. I'll watch it. Change your life. If you watch all of Transformers, and we watch the movie, and we sing the Weird Al song Wait, together. which movie? Yeah, which movie? Dare to be stupid. The one with Mark Wahlberg? No, asshole. Say, it doesn't no, matter. All those movies what? are terrible. No, why would I do that to myself? The one with Shia Douche? Oh, God. <laughs> The original, it's perfect. Where oh, the not, animated movie? It's so good. There you go. It, yeah. oh, Orson so Welles. The animated one. Okay. Right. Leonard Nimoy. Like it is so good. That hurt. It wounds me. Leonard Nimoy is in Star Wars. I will. That wounds me. <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, so, 
D is walking towards this shiny obelisk thing, and he's flicking rocks, and there's these weird eye things that are lasers that are shooting the rocks, and he gets up there, and then Blondie McBlonderson comes up on her motor acuity cycle on her expanding rocket launcher, and then she gets through the eyes, and the door opens up, and horses run out, and she gets hit by lasers, and she falls down, then D's on the carriage, and they fight on the carriage, and she calls out the vampire's name, and D's like, Whoa! And gets knocked off the carriage and falls down. <laughs> and he's about to leave her. She's just, like, fucking lying on the side of the road, like, all torn to pieces. And he's about to walk by, and she's like, Mama. <laughs> it was so fucking weird. Yeah. You're like, uh, okay. And then he's like, okay, well, fine, I guess. Since she had a mom once upon a time, I'll fucking save you. <laughs> like everybody did. <laughs> So she looks down and she sees that she has bandages on her chesticles. And I like she's how like, she's what? Like, she's like the first thing she does is says like, "Oh, you had to undress me while I fucking you know while I was unconscious." He's like, "Bitch, I saved your life." Yeah, it's bad or bleed to death, motherfucker. <laughs> okay, so this is still very weird. So she goes, uh, the sickly man whose grove who turns into a fucking angel creature for some reason with drugs. Exactly. I. Did they even explain it? No, all? they don't explain anything. I remember looking up going, whoa, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. It only gets weirder. Yes. That's so true. he gets jealous of her and he says that, or, you know, because he's, she's like uh, talking about D, D's nuts, that, he, quote, he's against us. I'm like, what fucking empirical evidence do you have this guy's against you when he just bandaged your chick's titties, you bedridden bitch? <laughs> Sorry, I don't think I'm being ableist, right? Because that's not a, like a protected class for somebody who is like infirmed and otherwise a ghost demon. That's true. No, you're fine. There we go. So the team surrounds the carriage and they fill it with arrows that completely destroy it. And what is it? It's just a piece of cloth. Like the promise of being able to record an episode without technical difficulties, am I right? <laughs> That fucking black cloth in the wind. You're talking about this as we're in the process of recording. I know. So. I yeah. have not stopped looking at Audition. And it, we still aren't out of the woods yet. Yeah, motherfuckers <laughs> on YouTube, right? If you're watching this. Tell us, do you want more eye contact? Because it's going to be a real struggle for me not to look I'm at this I'm constantly looking at it right now, too. I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at because I never do all this audacity. But I'm like, is it still running? Honestly, I wish that it recorded in a different color than red because it just makes me think that it's dying. <laughs> well, we're using Audition. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Oh. <laughs> You'll get no argument from me, counselor. <laughs> so there's a disembodied laugh, and then the shadow guy kills the big dude who dissolves into the shadow. Oh, uh, he says, uh, wash the shadows. Right? Yeah. The big dude says that before he dies. Yeah. And they're yep. like, what, big dude, no. And the guy goes into the shadows like you've seen in so many other forms of art. It was fine. Several yeah. anime, same thing. Yeah, no. absolutely. Uh, so he can... Even in the scroll? Hmm? Even Ninja Scroll. Yeah, yeah. it's like in it's that in, character. It's in Naruto like, all the time. Yeah, Naruto. I really like the Elder Lich. I thought that was a cool looking character. Kind of fun. The one who's like on the unicycle the whole time and just kind of sputtering around a bit. Yeah, yeah. the one that's basically like the politician of like demons. Right. He's like, ah, don't fucking get mad at me, dude. We're just doing our job. But yeah, he's like, he coordinates the goons for the vampire. And he's like, well, I'll pay you. And he's like, this dude paid me a hundred million dollars yeah like you're not gonna pay <laughs> well and not only that but he's like we've also worked for this guy like for fucking ever yeah so right. what makes you think we're gonna change alliances so hordes of enemies come and they plan to ambush him and then grove gets injected with some weird shit and angel sperm yeah probably the and spunk just, of the divine <laughs> goes fucking crazy and just starts blasting things out of the water man if there was water in and he just flies around and yeah, he just flies through, starts shooting lasers out everywhere. But like, what's great about it too is he sees D and he just like fucking zeroes in. He's yeah, like, I'm gonna kill you too, bitch. Mm -hmm. And doesn't it work? <laughs> yeah, he, yeah he, he's like fuck you. And fucking slushed, cuts his slices ass. him in twain. Yep, cuts his ass down, and then he feels he know for a fact he feels that shit. Yeah, because it cuts back to him. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one of the weird things. Did you find his smile just awful and creepy? Oh, when general, he's like in angel creepy. form? Yeah. Yeah. It's like I he was in that. he was in pure climax that just stuck. He was like, oh <laughs> So he's just like squirting everywhere. He's yeah. just like squirting. Lasers oh. everywhere? If that's what angel cum looks like, I'm <laughs> never going to heaven. <laughs> you see the shadow monster dodges a bunch of arrows and then he's like, That was close, and then an arrow goes through his throat, which yeah. was badass when the beardo finally catches up to him. Yeah. And then he falls and then uh he turns into fabric and the girder gets cut and he falls to his death. 
that was cool. I like that they got the revenge, but the pacing was all fucked up because you go from like, all this crazy action, and you don't even really realize that they're still hunting this one guy, and there's no gravity to it. They're not like, this is for right, Big right. Guy. Because right. you don't even know who fucking Big Guy think, was. He was in one scene by this point. Even before they kill the Shadow Dude, uh, they're chasing the carriage again, mm-hmm. and then the girl fucking penetrates through the fucking uh, truck with their, like, right? And she decat uh, decom where I don't know. I think that happens a l- just this much after Decapac- what I said. Decapacitate. Incapacitate. Incapacitate. Yeah. Decapitate or incapacitate. <laughs> so D confronts Charlotte and she says she's in love with the vampire and she hasn't changed yet. He warns that she will do it and if she does get changed, he'll kill her. Then the sassy girl, she uh, tries to take Charlotte and I call her the She 1000 because she turns into That's metal, yep. comes up through. She. That was pretty dope. Oh, yeah, and then she gets lightning that saves her, or the lightning strikes the thing. Did I skip something? Yeah, the well, lightning strikes the... Tree. Chip. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess... So, so... No, what, yeah, T-1000, you're right. What I thought what I thought happens is they're chasing, T-1000 stops the vehicle. As the vehicle stopped, they get pinned down. He says, hey, what are you doing to his buddy that has the knife? He goes, runs out, and then the shadow guy... Exactly. ...starts attacking yeah. him, and then that's when he shoots the shadow guy and kills him. Yeah, I also glance over the fact where D is imprisoned in a game of Cat's Cradle. That's right, because he's completely <laughs> covered in a shadow cloak. Yep, yep. I, uh, I, that's probably why I lost my mind, because I was like, <laughs> naturally the hero of this film wouldn't be caught in a child's game from the 1200s. Right. So, then she becomes a tree person. That's what this whole dialogue happens after that, where they're like at the pool of water, and he's like, I'm gonna kill you, bitch. And then Laura Dern's like, I'm going to kill you and take you. And then She-1000 and Werewolf Boy show up and be like, neither of you are going to take her. Right, right. Exactly. Come and claim him. And then she turns into a tree and he cuts her head off and then she gets her struck by lightning again. That's a crazy thing. He incurs so much damage in order to kill that broad and then it's completely useless and she gets gets killed by the weather later. Right. Yeah, out of nowhere either. And just, when, and I thought it was like a Layla's special power. With the, just whole, thing. Right. with the whole dialogue with D and uh, the chick that's, a, you know, obsessed and in love with a uh, hot topic dude. Um, <laughs> hot topic? <laughs> he, uh, you find that she tells D that she loves him. I think for the first time. If I'm not mistaken. She, she that she, she loves she Rutger loves, Hauer. I'm sorry? She loves Rutger Hauer. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So he's like, you did say his name, right? I didn't just hear that. And she's like, no. I did say his name yeah. because I love him. And he's like, you don't know love because he's a vampire. A D kills the werewolf with the mouth in his tummy super easily. Right. Like, I thought that was a bit it was a bit of a letdown, right? right? That because was a pretty cool just, character. Yeah. You know, it's basically, uh, I don't know, they just cut it out, right? It's like we had this whole fight scene. Nah, fuck it. Scrap it. We're just going to have them say, like, a couple final words and then be yeah. done. And that's what I mean. Like, they do themselves a disservice by having this amazing fight scene with all these guys with the zombies and then going to this is kind of anticlimactic. Right, especially because he's almost, like, one of the main henchmen. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just, like, done. Well, Nothing. did you guys talk about all the bombs on the bridge? No. Because that's where you also see a little bit of the wolf where you, you know. Oh, the sensory? Where yeah, you yeah. Look he and like, see through the, the, the bridge exactly, and see everything. Yeah. Well, and that's how um, Beardy Dude gets fucking knocked off into the into And he gets his one eye. He turns into the one-eyed man. Mm-hmm. One-eyed Willie. So, they go to the castle. They find a ship to ferry... Oh, yeah. They find a ship to fantasy bullshit land as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes to bite her. She wants it. And he refuses because he doesn't want her to have the thirst for blood and to miss out on the sun that she loves so much. Meyer fights D, and there's some like weird vision. And there's blood on suits of armor. And then his head is split in half. And then D becomes bats. And then Char- Charlotte has a vision. And then the hand warns him about what's happening. Yeah, and that it was so weird. Like yes. the whole um, stone gargoyle thing with the axe and you're like wait so the gargoyle came to life i thought that he like fell on top of it or something and then that's when it gets like kind of later to the mom vision where like, what the fuck even is this right it was all very strange yeah and then so the d's mother is in a pool of blood and says that she knows that he hates her quote what choice did i have I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you talking about his birth? Like, maybe there's something lost in translation here, but it didn't really work. I think they're tying it back to, like, 
the manga stories or something that we have no clue about. It's possible. Yeah, it's like a deep cut where somebody's like, oh, yes, thank They're you for referencing the issue yeah. seven. <laughs> so the dead hunters are floating in coffins, and they kill Birdie with his own arrows. Which was just the vision as well. So yeah. That was weird. Not a huge fan. Layla is then praying at a gravesite where her like, child version is, which is thinking about how her parents were killed. And Beardo tries to bite Layla. And then Grove ghost comma causes him and dies. Yep. <laughs> These are sentences in my notes. Yep. What the fuck? He, the vampire finally bites Charlotte. There's a cool look of the blood flowing from her up the stairs to the bloody, or like the bloodless mummified lady. They're like blood mass. Yeah. Like yep. bloody goop. Yeah. And then um, I think that's Carmilla. And she has the sword in her chest. And then uh, the vampire's head is split in half again. Dee is struggling to get the vampire lady. He's shooting wind and lightning, and or he's having a shot at him, rather. Right. The bloody vampire lady, you see a side titty, a little bit of nip, not too bad, not too shabby. He kills her. The sword comes out of the, out of her, right? Yeah. And she's, like, slowly coming back to life. He ends up killing her. Yeah, so she's not a threat. Nope. <laughs> she's not even fucking standing, from what I remember. Not she just gets sense. iced. Yeah. Uh, and then he kills her. Vamp and Charlotte are going to go off to the city of the night. D fights. Charlotte dies. But what's funny is the the whole time this is all happening, I'm thinking the uh, OG, I'm starting to call him a uh, hot topic now, I feel like he was dead because he had his whole face split in half. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this guy's dead. Okay, so he's dead. The, the plot twist. Vampirilla is dead. Uh, <laughs> fucking Charlotte's dead. Everybody's dead except for D and um, fucking Charlize Theron. We should have called her bad Charlotte. <laughs> very good, very good. So he just randomly appears. He's like, his face just like slides back together. And he's yeah. Like, oh, we're good. Yeah, just and then kidding. so he fights with D, and then D purposefully misses him, and he's like, look, I kind of established, like, you know, we know I could kill you, but there's right. no bounty on you. The bounty is on her, and I just need to prove that she's dead. So he gathers so he up her ring and is like, peace deuces, out. done. I love that. I yep. know that it seems anticlimactic, but I love that, like, Bushido, almost like John Wick, where it's like, nope. This is the contract. This is the rules. We've, we've established the rules. Right. You're not my target. This is my goal. Goodbye. So as they're leaving, uh, they see the spaceship fucking oh, shoot up so into stupid. the sky. And it's so cheesy because you see uh, Charlize Theron just like, please make it. Oh, my God. Please make it. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, God. We know it's going to make it. Come on. Which they don't even really explain where it goes. I, it, thank you. I thought like that I missed some land of dark or whatever. No, they say like the stars or like where there are no stars, like eternal night. Or yeah, something something like that. but it's like a suicide mission, right? I don't even know if it is. I, I feel like because they were going to go together vampires. when she was alive, but well, they said the city of the night was that. Once upon a time, every castle had one of these. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, right. Maybe I should read the Wikipedia. I don't know. <laughs> So, the ending of the movie is my favorite part of the entire movie, which is just, it's dramatic schlock, and I don't know why I like it so much, but they're at a funeral, and at first I'm thinking that it's Charlotte's funeral, right, because Charlotte was just killed, and it's not. There's a little blonde girl who comes up, and, and she's looks just flowers. like Layla. Exactly. And as soon as you see her, you're like, oh, fuck, this is in the future. And she's like, you knew my grandma, huh? You want to come back and meet my dad? Like, she's being super sweet. He's like, no. Which kind of echoes back to the first one, where he's right. not tying any kind of roots or anything. Nothing beyond the promise that he made with Layla, that whoever died, the person who survived, would bring flowers bring and leave flowers her grave. Right. And so he's like, I'm just here to, you know, bring or perform on a promise. And then his stupid fucking hand gets to the last line of the movie. Oh, that was nice. See, you're not all bad after all. You just dress bad. <laughs> you know who? Then who, Steve Buscemi, I swear. You know who plays the uh, the hand? Who? And like five other fucking characters in this movie. Bender, Joe DiMaggio. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Yeah, that's he awesome. he does apparently a lot of anime. Cause I looked at his IMDb and I was like, wow, nice. this is neat. Awesome. Yeah. So hold on. I'm before riding off, they watch in the distance as the ship hidden underneath the castle takes off to the skies with Charlotte's corpse and Meyer Link inside. So why is she so worried about them making it? I don't understand. Okay, maybe there's a different translation and they just filled words with that because it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why she's so concerned with him leaving with a dead body. <laughs> Get 
get that shit out of here. <laughs> We're not too many dead bodies all over the place. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. Fucking weirdos. So this one, classic, trashic, tragic. Go. Trashic. I'd agree. Yeah, I have to. Like, it's technically proficient, but it's, like, just completely bereft of any kind of story I enjoyed or characters that I it enjoyed. It almost seems like it needs to be, uh, like, a three-part or something. I think that'd be great. That's kind of when I said, like, a trilogy. Like, if yes, it was three-hour-long exactly. episodes, like, on Netflix or something, I could see... Like, if this was, like, the Godzilla thing, I could definitely see liking it. Because I could... I, if it's short, segmented, but very clear as to what's going on. Exactly. Like, exactly. They, they treat you like a dumbass in that Godzilla thing. Where they're like, <laughs> look, this is a city that was once Mecha Godzilla. There is nanometal. The nanometal can <laughs> self-replicate and become a city. And you're like, I, I fucking got it. Yep. And then for the next hour, Don't like, talk about it again. hey, <laughs> the nanometal makes cities. And you're like, God... Damn it! But at least you know. Whereas this, I'm like, I'm having to look on Wikipedia after watching the movie to figure out why the fuck she was cheering on a spaceship with her enemy, ostensibly, and a corpse. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the end of the movie, do you really feel like uh, main vampire dude is an enemy? No, Not he really. He's a homie. Right? Right. So who was the enemy? The chick? Just, that's it, right? Vampirilla? Uh, or her parent or her dad or something like for not understanding the powers of true love but like how can you be in love with the monster like that's kind of the argument that it has even yeah. he's acknowledging that he's a monster he doesn't want her to be like him so you know that there's a shelf life for this anyway yeah it's yeah. kind of weird I don't know I, maybe there's some like fucking Japanese poetry part to it but I'm just not digging it because <laughs> the first one I mean it's simple it's clear it's a revenge plot you get there's a, a, a goal the whole time they don't have to tell you that, like, they can break the spell or whatever with the right. vampire. It's just that's what's happening, you know, right. because that's where the action is always going. Whereas with this, like, he, I don't know, the, I guess maybe it's supposed to be kind of like a twist because you realize that the dad never says to kill Meyer Link. It's just bring her back, bring her dead back. or alive. And so I guess it's kind of a twist when he lets him live, but I just kind of took that as like, oh, a cheat open kind of thing. I think we totally glossed over... Um, one of my favorite parts in the film where he goes to buy another horse because his first horse gets fucking demolished. Yeah. And then he goes to a guy. Offers That's the him, best part of the whole fucking thing. Right? Like, he, offers, it, yeah. he offers him money. The guy's like, oh, yeah, dude, if you can afford it, this is the horse you get. And he's like, oh, that's fine. The fucking sheriff and all his homies come up and they're like, <laughs> we don't knock your kind around here. And then, uh, he, you know, the, the guy that sells him the horse tells a little story like, oh, once upon a time, you know, um, a vampire came and destroyed the town, took a bunch of people, took a bunch of kids. And um, I remember a stranger came into town, Dampier, just like yourself. And uh, I'll never forget it, and I'll never forget a face. It was you. And he thanked him. He said, thank you very much. Pulled out a fucking sweet-ass gun, aimed yep. at the sheriff's head, and he's like, you better go. So I thought uh, that, that, that was, was really actually cool. that's the best part of the whole movie. I take that back. I think that the funeral is second best, but that scene is awesome. Yeah, uh, like I don't know that deep kind of connection there. Yeah, like, you really, like you have to reconcile the fact he is willing to die in that scene. Yeah, absolutely. Like, or shortly thereafter for doing what he's doing, and it's kind of a gift. Like I, I got to enjoy eighty more years on this earth. Right, of right. Me. And it also it also just kind of reiterates. Um, eternal life for D. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because like it's like the second, yeah. it's the second time, well, technically in this, it's the first time you're reminded that he doesn't age. Yeah. And then the second time is at the end of the movie when right. uh, he sees the girl with the ground. So. Perfect. Any closing remarks, gentlemen? No, got nothing. Mm, not really. Do you feel like the character D changed from the first to the second movie? A little bit. Like, I, I didn't understand the whole asking for twice the amount of money sort of a thing. It seemed out of character when, like, in the first one, he's just gonna help the girl for the You know what's funny? Movie. Especially, especially, um, somebody who lives forever. Right. Right? It's like, <laughs> what do you... Unless you're gonna give it away or something? Right. Because in uh, the first one, he just wanted to kill that's the all goal. the nobles. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna kill the nobles. And then in this one, he has a noble right there that he could kill and he doesn't kill him. So the right. presentation... Like, the other one is, like, done for hire. And, if, like, if you've seen Yojimbo or those movies, like, you can see the kind of the calculating nature so I kind of took some of that into this but I mean honestly the character 
he's a little bit more bland in this one, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Like the other one, you get to see him like struggling a lot more with his you know bloodlust and other things. And I right. figured for sure with a movie called Bloodlust that he would have to reconcile that at some point. Nothing. Would you would you guys be down to see a live action of Hunter D? I think it could think, be good. Yeah, yeah I think it could I be do. really good. Yeah, so. it, it, in terms of trying to figure out who could do it well, that would be a scary prospect because who's going to give the kind of budget this would need? Either that or, again, I mean, you can always do um, a Netflix. Or an Amazon. Or an TV. Amazon or an HBO or, you know. Yeah, I think like a six-part series could be really great for this. But I think that in order to do it, you have to explain the symbiote slash parasite hand because well, that's just something that's so inaccessible. And, I mean... This isn't exactly closely similar, but I mean, aren't they doing a live action Witcher? Yeah, with Henry Cavill. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mustacheless I mean, Superman himself. <laughs> typically, video games don't translate well. Whoa, well, classically no. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. What you guys didn't like Doom? <laughs> no, I like the four seconds of Doom. That's a first person shooter. How yeah. about that shit? Which is funny because most people hated that part the most. Uh huh. Sorry. I think that Super Mario Brothers is awesome. Oh, I don't Mario know why everybody's so fucking. But you fucking know what? Cool. Super Mario Brothers is a cult classic. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucking weird. The people who made that were on mushrooms. How about that? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Koopa, Koopa. All right, gang. Ryan, it's time for that last action line. You ain't really. No. <laughs> you ain't. You ain't really ready, Chad. You ready for that last not action? Not really. Line? Not really ready. Uh, if you ain't watching him dying, you ain't really trying. Enjoy killing time. Until next week. And for Brian, for Chad, for myself, for the people who made this butt-fucking movie, for all of the mutant goons from beyond, from our patrons who we love dearly, I am Jake, reminding you to go out there, subscribe, like, do all that shit. It actually has merit and value to this show. The more listeners, the more followers, the more revenue we can generate, those things can justify us spending more time in this stupid garage yelling about movies you might not have even seen. There you go. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Gmail, that life. You can find us pretty much anywhere. This is Jake Romain. We'll go out there and do something you love. And remember that all work and no power play makes jam.